So this is a really good problem for just refining some of the, the techniques for solving these uh, hydrostatics problems we've been doing. Um, the first thing I'm going to mention is that this problem is maybe a little unphysical. I'm not completely sure. Um, what I know, just because I'm familiar with doing these kind of problems, is that right because because this point is higher than this point over here, I know that the density of this fluid is actually greater than the density of this fluid, right? Um, and so you might think, well, if the density of this fluid is, if the green fluid is greater than the density of the blue fluid, then how is it sitting on top of the blue fluid? Shouldn't it sink through it? I don't know. Um, what might happen is uh, if the surface tension between these two fluids, between the green and the blue, is high enough, they won't actually mix, and so the, the green heavier fluid will be on top of the, the other fluid. But it's just something to think about um, with this problem. So uh, this is going to start the exact same way as every other problem. Like what we're really trying to do is we're trying to find two points, right, that we can use the hydrostatic equilibrium uh, concept, the idea that the, the pressure is the same at the same level in a connected fluid to solve the problem. Uh, and so that point is here, right? It's points two and three. These points are connected through this fluid and they're at the same height. So I know that P2 is equal to P3. Um, I have atmospheric pressure pushing down on the top of both of these, right? Um, so I know that P1 is equal to uh, atmospheric pressure and P5 is equal to atmospheric pressure. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna come up with two, with two equations, right? So uh, the P2 equation, what, what is this pressure equal to? Well, it's equal to P0, the pressure on top, plus uh, density of the green, I'm gonna call it unknown, um, yeah, it makes punk <laughs> or runk, I guess, because it's a row, but it's uh, times G times H, right? Um, the pressure at three is P naught plus uh, this other height. I guess I'll call, um, I'm going to call this one H1. I'm going to call this one H2. Uh, and so, so this one is rho water um, times G plus times H1 plus H2. Right? Okay, right. So that's it's right. This is H1 as well. Right? Um, so yeah, we're, we have this we have this equation here, and uh, we're solving for the density of that unknown that unknown. Uh, fluid, right? So these these cancel out, right? And we are left with this equation. Let's just write it down so we can get it in our heads. This is H1. This is rho water times G H1 plus H2. Okay. Um, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna solve. I can just divide by G times H1 throughout the whole thing, and I can solve for this unknown density. Divided by G times H1. Um, I used H1 and H2 because those are what's given in the problem. Right? Um, yeah, and. Uh, I guess the thing to note is that the G's cancel out. That's cool. Um, and this is rho W. H1 in the problem is one is four centimeters plus one centimeter divided by four centimeters. And so we get that this overall is equal to five fourths 
the density of water. So it is indeed a higher density, right? That's what I that's what I predicted just based on the the initial sort of thing there. Um, the number I actually get is um, twelve fifty kilograms per meter cubed. Right, so that's the density. Um, so just with all of these, right, the trick is really to find two points that you know the pressure of, that you can calculate the pressure of, right? So in this case, P2 and P3, that are actually equal to each other, right? And I can calculate P2 because I know the hydrostatic equation for the green fluid, and I can calculate P3 because I know the hydrostatic equation for um, this, this column of, of water here, right? So that's our general strategy for all of these. Mm -hmm.